Hi and welcome to this week's Property Insider video. Today I have a chat with Dr Andrew Wilson about the latest property market data, about the Australian Bureau of Statistics price indices, what's happening to property finance, and boy is there an interesting trend with property investors, and a few of the other news headlines to keep you up to date. If you want to remain up to date with the property markets, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel now? Just click the subscribe button, and if you click the little bell icon, you'll be updated when a new video comes out each week. Much of the property news this week has revolved around the recession we're slipping into, the latest house price indexes released by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, and the most recent finance figures. And despite all the doom and gloom, there's good news out there if you look for it, including the slowly lifting consumer confidence, the fact that more homeowners and investors are putting a halt to their mortgage holidays, and there's some of the topics I'd like to discuss today with Australia's leading housing economist, Dr Andrew Wilson, Chief Economist of My Housing Market. And of course, we're going to discuss his latest property data as well. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you very much, Michael. Yes, so things are certainly continuing to look a little brighter on the housing market front, and we will get some data out regarding the general economy in terms of those unemployment numbers coming out this week, and that'll be very interesting too. While it'll be interesting to discuss the latest Australian Bureau of Statistics figures a little bit later on in our chat, let's start off with what's happening in our property markets at the moment. What is your data showing us? Well, as I just said, Michael, certainly things are looking brighter. If we look at auction clearance rates this weekend, of course, it followed the pause the previous weekend for the Queen's birthday holiday. Uh, perhaps surprising again on the upside were the number of auctions now being conducted. In Sydney, they're not too far away from where they were a year ago. And Melbourne also listing numbers are starting to pick up. Clearance rates are also reasonably healthy in particularly Sydney. Uh, Michael, we've had clearance rates above 70%. But let's still take a grain of salt with these auction clearance rates results because we still have high numbers of withdrawals. Withdrawals are still around about 10% of listings at the moment. And of course, we have to count for online auctions because, of course, most of those results uh, online auctions and we don't really have a clear insight as, as to how those online auctions are measured. But nonetheless, there's no doubt that auction markets are picking up. More auctions will come in to the market over the next uh, few weekends as we do have that easing of open air auctions now well and truly in force. Uh, if we look at other data, Michael, the National New Listings Index has, after a sh uh, falling away over that Queen's birthday weekend period, which of course is the normal seasonal impact, we are now starting to see a rise again in new listings. So another sign that sellers are quite prepared to move into the marketplace. I think that does reflect increased confidence with the sh uh, shutdown restrictions continuing to ease. I think sellers are quite happy to move into the marketplace. And interestingly, Michael, we can see that the index is now higher than where it was a year ago. So the market is really now back to where it was 12 months ago. And if we look at the breakdowns, uh, Sydney fell away slightly with new listings over the week. Melbourne actually picked up. Uh, when we look at new sales numbers coming through, we actually saw a pickup in sales in the Melbourne market. But those new sales increases in Melbourne were a reflection of higher auction sales. And of course, that's given that we're now seeing more auctions coming into that Melbourne market. Uh, in terms of the relative situation of the capital cities, in terms of listings, Sydney still just behind Melbourne in terms of the number of new listings coming into the market. But Sydney well and truly is ahead of all the capital cities in terms of the new sales relativity index. So signs continuing to be positive for our housing markets, Michael, particularly the Sydney market. Certainly, even though we're moving into the winter period, given where we've come from, it looks like we are moving into a rebound environment and no doubt that the prospects for a reasonable spring selling season are improving. Well this week the Australian Bureau of Statistics published their residential property price indices for our eight capital cities. Now it's a little bit out of date as yeah. it always is Andrew. Of course the world's changed a lot since those figures because they were for the March quarter. We're now That's almost it. at the end of the June quarter. What did you glean from those figures? Well, as you said, Michael, they are backward looking, the data. It's the March quarter. We've had a, a very significant change to our economic and our housing market environments due to the coronavirus shutdown since March. But it does show us that, that markets rebounded very strongly over the year to March. 
uh, double figure growth for house prices in both Melbourne and Sydney. And unit prices were also quite strong in those capitals, particularly in Melbourne over the year. And of course, all we have to do is look back 12 months or to March last year, and we were in a similar environment to what we experienced a couple of months ago in terms of the doomsayer house price crash narrative that was infecting the market. And I think the point clearly is that those buyers that ignored those negative sentiments a year ago, or just over a year ago, and purchased property, particularly in Sydney and Melbourne, certainly have reaped the benefits of strong prices growth over that period. Now, I'm not suggesting we're going to see a similar outcome this year, but it does show that those that are prepared to ignore what is a lot of those, that negative sentiment in the marketplace, look at the fundamentals, certainly can have a positive outcome in terms of their investments from capital growth. And I think we're now starting to see signs that similarly, the outlook for the property market is not going to be as bleak or as negative as many have predicted yet again as a result of the coronavirus. Also, the Australian Bureau of Statistics brought out their finance figures, and there were some interesting trends in those. Investors are sitting on the sidelines, but I'm not sure it's their choice, Andrew. I think many want to get into the market. No, look, extraordinary results, Michael. What looked like a beginning of a revival in investor activity earlier this year has now stalled. Of course, so has most activity for lending because of coronavirus. No surprise there. But the investor activity levels have continued to decline. And as I said, extraordinarily, we are now seeing investor activity tracking at the same level as first home buyer activity which is just remarkable that investor activity is at those all-time low market share rates. And of course, owner occupiers are well ahead of investors in terms of their share of the loan market. And we only have to look back three or four years ago, five years ago, and investor activity was nearly as high as owner occupier activity. But investors have certainly decamped the market, Michael, to some degree. And as you so rightly indicated, I think that it's more a case of credit squeeze still in operation investor finance rather than investors not being happy to invest because we have seen with those other ABS figures that prices have risen quite strongly over the past year. So investors would have been aware of that, but unfortunately it looks like they're unable to get into the market, perhaps because banks are still restricting their lending. Well, we're finding that on the ground that they're there, they're interested, they're keen. It's just taking a lot longer to get the loans. Everybody's being looked at a lot more carefully. And then a day or two before settlement, the bank comes and says, hey, please show that you've still got a job. Please show that you're still in the right industry. They're making it very difficult. Now, the graph we're looking at at the moment shows the difference in lending from state to state. Yes. And there are some peculiarities there, Andrew. Well, it clearly shows that New South Wales is the state where suffered the biggest decline. These are year-on-year -year results. I think quite reasonable, strong growth, in fact, for owner-occupiers in New South Wales. And that's where the market revival has been well and truly centred, and Victoria as well. But lending to investors is down quite sharply still year-on-year -year in New South Wales. It was the New South Wales, the Sydney market, that led the charge with investors uh, four or five years ago. But certainly that hasn't revived. And market share now is at near record lows for investors. And that is an important part of fueling our housing market and our economy. And really, we're continuing to see consequences in terms of culture, particularly from the Banking Royal Commission of a year ago. Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, yes. A lot's happened since then, hasn't it? Now, we were saying a bit earlier on that confidence does seem to be coming back. People are seeming to feel a bit better. And once again, this week, both the Westpac index and the ANZ, Roy Morgan Consumer Sentiment Indexes have lifted and it's continually lifting. But I think we've got to be clear, it's from a very, very low base. And currently there are still more pessimists around than optimists, but you can see a light at the end of the tunnel. The other interesting thing I learned this week is that a lot of homeowners and investors who put their payments on pause, their mortgage payments on pause, are resuming paying loans. The ANZ said about a third of their customers who deferred loan payments are recommencing payment. That's another good sign, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely, Michael. And as I said, we usually, I guess those negative headlines are fueled in times of uncertainty in respect to either the housing market or the economy, but things are typically a lot brighter in this country than what are predicted. We are certainly looking a lot better in respect to outlook for the economy and the housing market. People are feeling better about themselves. 
And even though over the last week we did see some easing in the share market, it's bounced back recently as well. And really it's holding now. And that's another good sign that investors are still happy to be a part of the general Australian economy and the general, I guess, investment landscape. And going forward, I think we've done really well in terms of obviously coronavirus issue. And I think we're going to do particularly well in terms of the level of recovery that we'll have in our economy. But look, those unemployment numbers to come out for May will be certainly very instructive. Well, we'll discuss that when we get together next yes. week and there'll be a lot more news and your latest data as we do every week. Thanks for your weekly update, Andrew. Thank you very much, Michael.